We said we would get Brexit done uh, and we did. We now know Johnson's oven-ready Brexit deal will inflict double the damage on the UK economy of a deadly pandemic which has grounded flights, broken supply chains and caused whole industries to collapse overnight. And now his own Brexit Opportunities Minister says implementing in full the deal the Prime Minister sold to Parliament as a negotiating triumph would be... An act of self-harm. We said we put 20,000 more police officers on the street. We've got about 30,500 now. The Conservative government has cut 21,000 police officers since 2010, 23,000 police support staff, closed 600 police stations. And if all that's not bad enough, the government's own policing minister, Kit Malthouse, now admits. Although we're going for 20,000 extra police officers, actually to backfill retirements, we've got to recruit something like 45,000. So now spinning 20,000 police officers to replace 45,000 as some kind of win for the public is just completely insane. And with the fastest economic growth in the, okay, in the G7. Heard. Even BBC Breakfast now acknowledges that's not true. The UK's economy has actually experienced the second worst growth uh, among the G7. And if that's not bad enough, a new IMF forecast suggests that by next year we will have the slowest growth of any advanced economy with the single exception of Russia. We put in a, a, the biggest cut in national insurance for, uh, for 10 years. Johnson's government has hiked taxes for workers to their highest level in 70 years. Don't just take my word for it. So in two years, you've raised taxes the same amount as Gordon Brown did in 10 years. And here's the Chancellor himself. You accept that the tax burden is now up? Yes. The Institute for Fiscal Studies says any tax-cutting measures in the Chancellor's Spring Statement were outweighed by tax rises. The Office for Budget Responsibility, the official independent body that examines the government's public finances, also dismissed the government's tax-cutting claim, saying the overall tax burden imposed on workers by Johnson's government would be the highest since the late 1940s under Clement Attlee's post-war government. As for universal credit, uh, what the Chancellor has done uh, by uh, changing the, the, the way the, the tax is paid on, is effectively give a tax cut uh, to people worth a thousand pounds. The policy he's talking about only applies to the 40% of people receiving the benefit who are actually in work. It won't make a blind bit of difference to the remaining 60%. That's 5.3 million claimants who aren't in work. You're an honest speaker. Yes.